Hello, can you hear me, class? Yes. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Hello. All right, Ricardo, Ruth. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Glad to see Claudia Maldonado. Jaime. Rosa, how are you? Fine, fine. You? I'm okay, thank you. It's hot. Yeah. It's very hot today. Yeah, it's hot today. Well, the complete day was hot. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we, we are in, in, a, in a morning, in the morning today. You are in a what? In the morning, morning today. You know about the... the oh, the yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, we are morning. Yes, you're right. Morning, yeah. About Diego Maradona, right? Diego Maradona has passed away. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he was the greatest soccer player ever? Mm, that, I don't know. Probably that the Maradona was was a great uh, soccer player, but I don't know. Pele is the is the most. Do you think but you think Pelé was better? Yeah, I think it's I think it's better, it was better that that than Maradona. Okay. But the only thing is that Pelé never played outside of Brazil. That that's yeah, yeah. That that's the only thing I say, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, what's up, Gio? Jonathan Marvin. Gio, is that your Argentina? Is that your Argentina's shirt? A tribute to, to all the Maradona? all the Argentina is crying to to Maradona, no? Oh yeah, I could imagine. But is it the news in around the world that the all all people knew had knows about the 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 that the Maradona pass away. You go to the pupuseria, the pupuseria that the, the, the pupusera know about the Maradona pass away today. Yeah, you know, forget COVID. I mean, Maradona right now is the, is the yeah. most, yes. Um, to be honest with you, I, 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 I love Maradona. I grew up watching Maradona, but I really think that he, it's not the best in the history. We still have to give it to Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. And the reason is because if you think about it, Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, the, the soccer they play today, well, before the pandemic, they play like three games a week, champions, league, this and that. And... And you know what I tell people, okay, tell me where was Maradona at 34? Where was Pelé at 34? Because people say, oh, Ronaldinho maybe was the best. Yeah, Ronaldinho could have been the best, but he finished at 29 because of his, his, his lifestyle. But I don't know. But it's sad. I, I was um, I heard that the government of Argentina is three days of national uh, mourning. Damn, imagine that. Yeah, yeah, that, that all people have. I don't know. Is are people crying in Argentina? Yes. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember that Maradona even has a church, the Mar Maradonians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember he has a church. Yes, he's true. <laughs> the Maradonians, yeah. <laughs> All right, is that is that your Maradona sh um, Argentina shirt, Gio? We can't hear you. Yeah. Maybe 
Hi, teacher. Hello, hello, hello. Ronnie, you? what's up? I, I think that the, the class mm -hmm. is the rest of the week or just two, just one day or? or? That's a good question. I promise I, I will have that for you in the chat tomorrow. Because I imagine the class would have started on Monday, but started Wednesday. Yes, me too. Okay, I, I, I think that I, I, I rest a week. <laughs> it's good for us. Well, yeah. Well, well. yeah. Yeah. You hear me now? But, Everybody but, works, I guess. Yeah, Gio, we hear you. Okay. But, but, but tomorrow you have class tomorrow on Friday too, no? I don't know about Friday yet. I will. I promise you, I will let you know tomorrow in the chat. Yeah, that the the, the when it's playing in uh, that he's playing that the, for recover the, the oh, okay. I mean, you need they need to have class to uh, this Friday, but the class is from Monday to Thursday. But you have class for recover that the, you have class uh, to uh, tomorrow and Friday too. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, Black Friday. The Friday is yeah. busy. <laughs> Black Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's it's Thanksgiving. Loud, loud. <laughs> oh yeah. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. I mean, do you know about the history of, of Thanksgiving? Yeah. You know something? Of course. Yes. Something about it. Yes. Yeah, of course I know the history. Do you know the history? Know, what, what, no. what do you know? What, what do you think a, Thanksgiving is Black about? Black Friday, you, you talk about... And not clearly, right? Oh, I, yeah, I explained, yeah, I think I told you about Black Friday. Yeah. Yes, but Black Hi, Friday, Ingrid. You, you talk. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you, good to see you. Um, Thanksgiving really is... Um, let, let me... Do you know what is a mm -hmm. nutshell? No. A what? What? Repeat it. A, a nutshell. No. Uh, in a resume. No. A what? It's in a resume. You give a nutshell. You give it uh, with, a, with a little. Uh, we have resume, some resume about something. Something like that. Yeah, very good. Yes. But, but the reason why it's called a nutshell, because a nutshell is very small. Small, yeah, yeah, you you are comprised all the, mm -hmm. whatever, yeah, and then you're giving a... Like, did you, you watch... write in the chat. Sure. Did you watch... Um, Thank you. Did you watch the movie The Ice Age? Yes. Uh, remember Scratchy? No. Scratchy the dog? The, 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 the... In the Ice Age. The one of the two. Scratchy, it was a square. Yeah. yeah, he looks like a squirrel. Ah, okay. Now he's, al it? he's always following the nutshells. Ah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and he never get it. Well, yeah. Do you know? Do you know that? Those animals, because of those animals, because they're very stupid, they help a lot to the forest because they always forget where where they where they put the, the shells. So they always get one and they bury it and then they forget. So they're all, they're actually planting <laughs> seeds. Yeah. All right, look, this is a nutshell. See if I can show you. Oh, oh, those are my masks. My dog killed one Saturday. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah. Yes. Good. Those are nutshells. So that's a saying when, when people say, okay, tell me everything in a nutshell, like Jaime said, resume, because the nutshell is very small. So people say, okay, in, in a nutshell, I'm going to say all the story inside a nutshell. Yeah. Um, Thanksgiving was because it started from religion in England. 
because they were um they were uh they were the protestants i think and um in england they were killing you if you were not catholic they kill you yeah. So many people were escaping England for religious freedom. And this were called pilgrims. So then the pilgrims, they, um, I think it was two ships, they escaped. I don't remember if it was 200 or 400 people. But the thing is that they arrived to America. When they arrived to America, the Indians in the American land you know, they were very cautious, like, who the hell are those people? So they, they studied them, I don't know, for how many months. And then the Indians realized that those people that came, they were not dangerous. In fact, the Indians saw that they were dying because um, the pilgrims, they could not survive the, the seasons of, of, the, of America, you know winter summer so they had no more food or anything so one day this indian now this is a story nobody knows how the hell he speaks english but there was an indian that did speak english or maybe he communicated he saw them in very very bad condition so the indian decided to live with the pilgrims and teach them how to survive. He taught them how to plant, how to grow food, how to kill, how, you know, which animals you can use for clothes. He taught them everything. So what happened was when more pilgrims came to America, the pilgrims in America, they taught the new ones what to do. So one day they decided, you know, oh man, we are thankful, we are alive, and everything is because of the Indians. So then they decided to invite the Indians for a, for a dinner, which was like a thank you dinner. That's why it's called Thanksgiving. And the party lasted like for three days. You know, you know the, the pilgrims, they put food that, from fruits they brought from England and food from the Indians. So then they did this big mix of food. So it was very nice for like, I don't know how many years, but then the pilgrims or the English people decided that the Indian people were not human. They were animals. So they took their lands. They took them like slaves. They obligated them to speak English. They obligated them to be Christians, you know, they did, they did many bad things. So that's why some people don't like the activist people. Some people don't like um, Thanksgiving because it was bad. I mean, they took all their land. And that's the reason why it's called Thanksgiving. Wow. So, but yeah. But, you know, I don't understand why some Salvadorian people celebrate Thanksgiving here in El Salvador. I understand if you live in the United States, you know, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a tradition in the country where you live, but here? So here. Yes, because everything. we copy everything American <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah. It's an, it's an excuse to drink or to eat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I see. I see everybody. You know, I, I see a lot of ads in Facebook. You know, let's celebrate Thanksgiving tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. One, but you know, this is. I don't know if I told you last time, but this is the biggest holiday in the United States. The biggest, more than Christmas. More than the July Fourth. Yes. Because. You know, that's one thing I like about the United States. The holidays over there, they're not like on a specific date. They are always like, uh, like Mother's Day is the first Monday of May. You know, 
And it's not like here, you know, like Mother's Day is May 10th. See, a domingo, oh, wow. But in the United States, it's always going to be like on a Monday. So Thanksgiving, it's always going to be on a Thursday, which is tomorrow. So that way people have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Mm -hmm. So it's horrible, the <clears throat> United States. Is, well, I don't know now with, with the pandemic, but the airlines tomorrow is a chaos because people traveling because, you know, everybody wants to be with their family. So then this is what I told you last time. Like, you know, if you live in California and your spouse lives in New York, you know, you have to say, okay, um, what do you want? Do you, you want Thanksgiving with your family or my family or think, or in Christmas, my family, you know, you have to do it. You know, it's not like in Salvador. Imagine when, imagine people say, I can meet my wife, man. Her family is from San Miguel and it's far. Dude, imagine the United <laughs> States. You have to, you have to take a plane from, from a six hour flight. So that's why people celebrate, you know, because the tradition is that, you know, okay, okay, baby. Uh, Thanksgiving with my family, Christmas with your family, New Year's is us. Our house. That's what people do. So that that's that's why it's Thanksgiving. Uh is it true that the president has a national he's talking yeah? Yeah, right now. I wonder what he's going to say. Maybe about the COVID, the vaccines. Hi, Carla. I the, see you there. Yeah, those things. Yeah, actually, he's talking about them. the vaccine. Of course. Are you a pro vaccine or anti vaccine person? I, I don't. I see a lot of people anti vaccine and. You know, there's a lot of helicopters over my house right now. Um, if you hear a helicopter, I'm sorry. I sent them to get fuel, but I told them to leave at 10. To take care of you. Hmm? <laughs> to take yeah. care of you. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I told them, don't go out at this time, dude. I mean, tomorrow. Yeah. All right, so everybody okay? Had a good weekend? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right. I see yeah. Claudia Maldonado. I see well, I see familiar faces. Of course, I see Veronica, Carla, Ingrid, Ricardo. I see Gio, Elena, Ronnie, Ruth. Uh, I see new faces. No. We, we got another Ruth. Well, we have Ruth Castro, single Ruth. And Ruth Balestrillo. From Cojute Ruth. Cojute Ruth. Yeah. The Cojute Ruth. Oh yeah, and and Ruth Vallecillos. Yeah. Elia, we have Sandra Hernandez. Hey Sandra. And Elena. Hi Elena, what's that in your background? Uh good evening. I think Hi. it's a park. Oh yeah, that's cool. Is it here? Uh, no. <laughs> it's oh, a park. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Let's watch a video from the uh, lesson. Before we start, do you celebrate um, any, do you go out and buy Black Friday things? No. 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 But you know, there are really, really People say, oh, no, that's a lie, because what they do is they raise the price one day before, and then blah, and then <laughs> they lower it, etc. But this is my opinion. If you know what you're buying, and you know the price, then you know if it's a bargain or not. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Um, for, like, for me, in my opinion, Walmart on... What's a Walmart? Some, some, they have very good deals. 
Yes. Like a smart TV for, a, you, well, I remember like a 32 inch smart TV for $99 is good. You know, Pollo Camper, even fast food restaurants have good mm -hmm. offers. Mm -hmm. But if I buy, let's say, something I don't know, like curtains, I don't know how much curtains cost. And, you know, they tell me, oh, they're, they're on special. I don't really, I wouldn't know because um, I don't know about curtains. Mm -hmm. So that's my opinion. So if, if you know what you're buying, then it could be a bargain. I like to go out and look yep. because I like to buy stupid things sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, tell me if you see my screen. All right. Yes. Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is like a video. This is like, um, Jason type video. Remember the Jason movies, the Friday the 13th? Yes. The yeah. cha, 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 cha. Jason movies. Those are classic movies. Yeah. I already saw the video. You saw it already? Earlier, yeah, earlier today. And I already posted a comment. Oh, you did? Okay, cool. Thank you. We'll see it. Okay, let's watch the video right now. It's a story. Um, try to get everything you can from it. Like, you know, what are they doing? Where are they? What activities are they doing? Okay, so I'm going to press play. Please tell me if you can, if you cannot hear, please let me know. We're about to begin a new course. We want you to keep on learning. So stay and watch the first intro video we have for you. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me out. Oh, don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that, just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the fields, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. And was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor, dead bride. 
so how did it turn out what finally happened to him that's the spooky part it's a mystery people saw him less and less and then theodore mcshane just disappeared no one ever saw him again but the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay then. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers in there in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that. Thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore, really. But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night. Okay, thank you. Claudia, you told us that you had a discussion here, right? Hi, you, you said that you added a post? Okay, I don't know. Uh, Okay, I, I can't hear you in this moment. You're getting cut off. Can you hear me, class? Okay, am I, am I cool? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, cool. Okay, um, well, Claudia, maybe you come back later. Okay, so first of all, how many ladies were there? Three. What were they doing? Uh, I'm telling a story. They are ch camping. They are camping. They were telling a no, story. Oh, there you go. Hi, Claudia. Mm -hmm. What happened? You said you added a post on the discussion. Yeah, that was my question. I, I know I, I wrote something, but I don't see it there. Well, you know, don't worry, the platform. Yeah, roll onto the platform. Yeah, you will see that the platform is not very friendly with us. What was what was your comment? What was your comment? That it was a spooky story and that I, I, I forgot the exact words, but mis pelos se pararon when the man said his name. Yeah. And you know that you know that the one of the biggest reasons there are so many fires in California, while well, in the United States, is because there's a lot of irresponsible people. Like in this video, not not like this video, but if you saw in this video, people always do campfires, and the majority never turn off the fire. So that's why there's always uh, fires in the United States. Also because they leave bottles, glass bottles. So when the sun hits the glass bottles, you know, like the reflection, yeah. starts fire too. 
this year it was very very bad in in it was very very bad in the United States with fires. In the whole world, not not, not just the United States. <laughs> with fires? No, I mean a bad year. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, Australia of course. had a very bad fire. Australia, yeah. California, my my family, the majority of my family, they live in California, and they would send me pictures and videos, and, and it was scary. It's, just, you know, like, it, you know, you go outside and your car is all full of ashes. Okay, so, um, Carla, what was the story about? Hi. Yeah, you don't have to give me the whole. You know, just give me like a everything in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. uh, they were a couple, I think. There was a couple. Now, remember, the story was about, so it's everything in simple past form. There was a couple. There was a couple, and, and the woman got lost, I think. Did the story say how she got lost? No. But no, maybe when, she, she was died. Maybe she, she died in a, in a fire. Maybe she died in a fire? Yeah. Okay, and what happened to the, her husband? Do you remember what happened to the husband? Did he die? No. No. The he husband look, uh, look her he every day in the look night. And, look and look at his wife every every night. Every night. With the flowers in the hand. For okay. His wife. All right. And who was the security guard that went there, Ingrid? I think that is a song. That song. But I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Can you the repeat couple. the question, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ingrid, who was the man at the it's end? the same. I know I didn't, I didn't see. <laughs> you didn't I saw the girls running. The last man is the, last man the same. Of you the didn't couple. pay attention. Can... At the last, I get lost. I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Who can help? Uh, let me see. Sandra Hernandez, are you there? Nope. Okay. Ruth, are you there? Who is here then? Maybe this watching <laughs> Nayib Bukele. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is everyone watching <laughs> Nayib Bukele in this moment? Yes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so all, all all people are watching the news right now in the yes and channel six. I I like watching Bukele, but when he has a conference, you know, with the press, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, w especially when the reporters from El Faro. Yes, <laughs> and they ask they, they ask him. <laughs> yes, yeah, they ask him a lot of questions. Funny. But you know, this is this is not good or bad. But one thing I like about I know I, I respect about Bukele. He's smart, man. He like he remembers all the questions. Yes. When they ask him, yeah, Mr. President, I have three questions. Number one, this and this, and then like five minutes, and then like five minutes later, oh, and question number two and number three, and then he just analyzes, and he starts making the numbers and the percentage, like, you know, and I say, okay, this. Yeah, he has good assessors, but he he's good in speaking, and and you know that's that's actually an ability. Preparing yes. a lot, he preparing a lot. The study only to I don't know to manage whatever. Yeah, you know, to... speaking like that in front of public is an ability, man. Because it, yes, he he doesn't make mistake. You know, he doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't move very much. He's prepared. <laughs> Or, or he, he, he gets prepared. He, he's not reading. No, he's not reading. Yes. Yeah. You know, that that's something to admire because... He never looks nervously. He never he looks is. nervous. No, yeah, that's true. The, he's yeah. very sure when he talks. Mm -hmm. 
and, and you know, and one one thing I, I also admire about him, he knows what he's talking about. He's lying or not, but he knows what he's talking about. Yes. Yeah, so don't I, lie. Huh? He don't lie. Oh yeah, he but lie. yeah, but you know, no, that's what I'm saying. No, because you know, some people like him, some people don't, but you have to you have to respect certain things about him that if he's lying or not, but he, he they, they are called, do you know what a rebuttal is? Rebuttal? Rebuttal. Uh -huh. Maybe yes. when you're searching something I'm about to say in your no. mind. Rebuttal is how to come right. back to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, rebuttal is this, like, um, rebuttal is, when I, when I tell you something negative, and you come back to me with something positive, like, mm. you know, like, um, let's say you're selling me, a, you're selling me a product. You're selling me a product, and I say, well, you know, I don't like your, I don't know if I should buy your product because I heard it's not good. I heard it's very cheap. That's okay. You know, you have to be prepared. How do I, how do I answer that? So that, that answer that you're going to give is called a rebuttal. Rebuttal. Oh. Mm -hmm. That rebuttal something, I don't know. Sorry? It's for rebuttal something that the, whatever idea that you have to, you have to rebuttal the idea to, to another person? Yeah. Yes, it's like a, it's a contradiction, but you know, but usually a lot of people who are in sales, who a lot of people who are in sales, they should be ready for any, any, anything that is coming to them. You know, like, but, 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 but rebuttal is something, rebuttal, it's funny. No, rebuttal is this, okay. Um, here, first of all, let me, let me, let me, let me write the word. I'll give you, a, uh, I'm going to give you a perfect example of what a rebuttal is. Okay, Sandra, I see, I see that you have a bad connection. You need to call to, to call to, to Nayib to, to put in a good connection. <laughs> Wow, you know, people from Claro should have a very good rebuttal. Have you ever sold a car? No. Okay. Yeah. I have sold two or three cars in my life. It's not because of my business. It's because I want to buy another car, right? But man, selling a car is very... It's not difficult, but it's very, uh, it's a stressing. Yeah. Because you have a lot of um, hustlers. Do you know what hustlers are? Yes. I think, I think the word in Spanish would be coyotes, you know, hustlers. You put your car, you want $4,000, they immediately, te doy tres ya, te doy dos ya, like, oh God, you know. <laughs> You know, and then when you show your car, this is a rebuttal. Mm. Imagine I am selling a 2000, well, I had this problem last time. I'll, I'll give you a, an experience. I sold my RAV4, my RAV4. It was a, I miss, I miss my RAV4. It was green. It had a name. Her name Can was- you say in, in, in Spanish, in Spanish, regatear? No, no, no. I'll give you the, I'll give you the example. Uh, my Rav4 was Hulk. That was her name. It was in 1996, but it was full extras. It was a four by four, and it was beautiful. It was like nice, okay. And that's what I put on the ad. You know, a Rav4 for sale. You no know, four by four, full extras. Bring your mechanic, everything is in perfect condition. 
So then the people come and you know, you know, what do you think they're going to tell me? See, but yeah, yes, I go viejita, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I have to have my rebuttal for that. I was prepared. Okay, they're going to tell me this and that and that and that. Mm. So when they told me esta viejita, you know, my rebuttal was, well, yeah, that's why I put 1996 on the ad. <laughs> You know, that's a rebuttal. Mm -hmm. You know, you like a to refuse. It's like a comeback. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like defending yourself. You know, it can be, it can mm -hmm. be, it can be um, good or bad. It can be very educated. You you can rebuttal in a very educated form. Usually, people in call centers we have a lot of problems with rebuttals. You know, people, ah, da, 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 you know. And then, you know, they tell, uh, yeah, but you know, I have to paint it. I have to, you know, it's funny because everyone who buys a car, I don't know, Gio, you told, you said that you sold cars. And then people that buy cars, they think that the more excuses they give, you will say, oh yeah, okay. Okay, so you know what, discount $2,000. You know, mm -hmm. so you know what they say is, hey, I think I, I, Imagine I wanted what four thousand for the car, and they tell me, "Look, I'll give you two thousand." And I said, "Why would you give me two thousand? Yeah, because it's old. I have to paint it. I have to do this." And I said, "Okay, first of all, this is my rebuttal." In my this ad, is, is Toyota. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a Toyota. In my no, ad. The, no. In my, yeah, in my ad, I put 1996, and I put like 15 pictures. Yeah, and you give your reason. Uh huh. You know, like okay, yeah, like your reason is not gonna get me. Yeah. And I, and you know, yeah, but tiene detallitos. I'm, okay, can you tell me which detallitos? You know, what little details do you think are mm -hmm. worth two thousand dollars? You know, it, what you know, so they can't find an excuse. You know. So that's but rebuttal. All, but he sold in car, you know. You have I don't know twelve year that that bill, and then you need to yeah, if you if you want to, I am to pay that this this price. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. No, you know that's what I told him. You know, it's a you know yeah. My rebuttal is when I listen to all his excuses, like blah 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 blah. Okay, now here I come. Boom 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 boom. Mm -hmm. You know that would be rebuttal. Uh, are any of you in sales? Nope. No. Uh, yes. Who who said yes? <clears throat> well, I have Ingrid. Ingrid, I can't see you, Ingrid. Yeah. Okay. But I hear I am. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there you are, Ingrid. What well, you're in human resources. Yeah, but I am working in my own business, Colombia. Oh, you have your own business? Yeah, I'm working on that because I'm I'm a start. Oh, very good. What what are you going to sell? Lingerie for women. I'm oh. going to to buy it in Colombia. Oh, nice lingerie. I don't know how to say it, but no, no, it's called lingerie. Underwear. Yeah. Okay. Lingerie. Underwear. For women, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it has a product. Ingrid, I think you're having a bad connection right now, or it's me, but I think it's you because. Yeah, she's freezing. Because I'm. Um, um, okay. yeah. Yes, I have troubles with the internet. Yeah, I could imagine. Okay. Hey, very, very good. So look, be prepared. Be prepared for, for, for everything they're going to tell you. You know, because when you offer, look, I have this set of lingerie, you know, the typical excuses they're gonna tell you is "Uy, qué cara," mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. "Why so expensive?" "Oh, Victoria's Secret is quality. cheaper." <laughs> uh huh. I had a fr uh -huh. Victoria's Secret is cheaper, and inside, you know, you're like, "You son of a," but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you have to but, have but, a rebuttal. Yeah, but Victoria's Secret disappeared. Huh? Disappeared. It's a what? But Victoria's Secret disappeared. 
the, the underwear is specialized. Victoria's Secret they disappeared. They, it's not, they, I don't know, he's uh, in Van Rocks. In they the, went bankrupt? Yeah, in Van oh, Rocks. There you go, Ingrid. <laughs> That's a good excuse. Look, when you tell you, oh. <laughs> it's a good excuse. Yes, I think. Yeah. You know, that could be a rebuttal. <laughs> No, but, 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 but it's the opportunity to, to, to have a, a new life. So. But it's not, the, it's not the same kind because it's a, a specialized product. I don't know how to say it in English, but um, it's um, moldeadores or, or uh, mm. busto pesado, espaldas anchas. It's mm. a kind of different product. Okay. I don't know how to say it in, in English. Yeah, maybe but, um, if you want, you can send me you can send me the info, and I can tell you because really that's um it, it's okay it's no problem if you just find a technical word for that. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see what you mean, but but you know yeah okay but you know that that would be a rebuttal you know because if someone says uy, bien caro and and Victoria's Secret es más barato, really? <laughs> I don't know the brand. <laughs> No, you can say, well, yeah, you know, maybe, I don't know, because they bankrupt. They went bankrupt, so maybe it's a reseller, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. Those are rebuttals. Yes. So back to the topic, um, that's what I, that's one thing I admire about, well, you know, one thing about rebuttals, the difficult part is that if you have no experience to, to come up with a, re, uh, with a rebuttal in the moment is very difficult. But the secret is if you don't know uh, perfectly your product, you can Exactly, explain. exactly. Exactly, yeah, because like people in a call center, like imagine those people in Claro. Those people at Tensión al Cliente, oh, they know every excuse they're going to tell them. Hasta ya saben que decir, me va a decir esto. Oh, okay, okay, you know. Yeah, you know, your system is ugly, blah, blah, blah. blah. They know, they already know, they heard every excuse. They have a rebuttal. The, the difficult part of saying a rebuttal is in the moment to, you yeah, know, spontaneous. You very smart and fast. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Like when I'm going to sell something, I have to think about it. Like what are the possible things they're going to tell me? And you know, if, if you sound sure, they will be careful too. Because um, before that, I remember I had a Mazda 2003 but it was a very, very, I, I love that car, but it was a two door. So mm. I, I needed a four door. And you know, it was funny because I don't, I, I don't like, you know, people call me a grandpa because I drive very slowly. I am extremely careful. I have this phobia of crashing. So I am always, I respect, you know, like, you know. So my cars, I always have them in good condition. And I remember that this lady, she called me she called me, can I see your car? Sure, where can we see it? How about, you know, by La Uca, et cetera. Okay, great. So I met her by La Uca. She got off with her friend. It was this man. I said, hi, nice to meet you. My name is David. And the man, you know, I, I analyzed them in two seconds because the man, he just gave, shook my hand like, you know, like I'm here, you know. And I said, oh God. I know that man, you know, he pretended to be very important. And the lady told me, he, he will help me analyze the car. <laughs> and it was funny because where I was parked in front of my car, there was another car just like mine, the same color, the same model, everything. But that car was a total disaster it was scratched and everything and i remember that lady she was late and i said oh my god maybe she came and she saw that car and she said no let's go you know i was kind of worried but no it was not that so when i told the man I said hi so look this is the car the man we were maybe 20 like i don't know 20 feet distance and the man just looked at my car and he says, wow, do you know, it's not the details, right? <laughs> and I said, oh, you. In a, in a bad way or in a good way? No, he was like, he was like saying like, I'm important. I know. <laughs> and, 
and, and I, I tend to get a little angry quick. And I said, really? You can see from that distance? Can you tell me three details you have seen on the car? I mean, you haven't even touched it. Can you tell me three little details? And the man, he just, he just like really was looking at it. I'm like, give me three details that you've seen right now. And he couldn't say anything. And I, and I said, look, in front of my car, there's another car. That car has details and you can see them from here. So I remember I told the lady, look, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not going to make business with you. I don't want to show you my car anymore. And she says, no, why, why? Because if you're going to bring an expert, really bring an expert. Look at this man. <laughs> you know, and I was talking to the lady so the man can hear. He already, he, he's already criticizing my car and he hasn't even driven it. You know, ya le gané la moral. So he's, even though if my car is in good condition, he's going to say, no, no sirve. So if I can show you my car, but bring a mechanic. That man stayed quiet. And I told him, hey, next time you check a car, everything you told me, you say it at the end, okay? <laughs> so Yes, I think it's the culture, right? I don't know yeah. why they are. But you know, pe the, the problem I think is that sometimes people mm -hmm. that buy, they think it, they think that the excuse they're going to say is the first time the seller hears it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why. So that's right, think of rebuttals. So back to that, that's one thing I like about Bukele, like when, when, they, when they start attacking him, he has good rebuttals, like in the moment. Or I don't know if he has a hearing, uh, something like on his ear, the siesto, the siesto. I don't know. And if he does, he's a good actor because he can't see. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, if you're in sales or Ingrid, I would recommend you when you start with your business, you're going to hear the same excuses. I think I think the number one excuse you're going to hear is, ¿Por qué tan caro? No me da descuento. Or etc. You know. <laughs> so I, I recommend you that. Dos por uno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Dos por veinte. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know. I my wife is a dentist, and I have learned a lot, a lot, a lot from dentists, and um, from her because really I didn't know a lot of things, and. And I tell my wife, look, you got to practice rebuttals. And because my wife, she always hears the same excuses. But my wife is very, like, naive. <clears throat> and I say, no, when they tell you that, you tell them this. Because, like, dentists, oh, look, I would recommend you one thing, okay? Really, I recommend you. When you go to a dentist, if you don't know the dentist, and if you think, mm, get a second opinion. Okay, because um, yeah, uh, if you if if you notice, this is I'm telling you because my wife um, she's not like that. <laughs> but what I've learned is that the the majority of the patients she gets, new patients, they do things on their teeth that they don't really need. Um, like I'll give you an example. My my father, he has a he has a daughter. Well, she's my sister, my stepsister, and uh, she has braces, brackets. Ha and my wife tells me, "Have you noticed? Really, watch tomorrow. Have you noticed how many people have brackets today? Many people, like almost everybody, has brackets." Because dentists will tell you, oh, look, you need brackets. Oh, how much are they? Oh, they're expensive. They're like $5,000. Oh, I don't have that much. Uh, let's do one thing. Pay me, pay me $500 up front and give me, I don't know, $25 a month. And you know, really? Yeah. And that's the thing. The majority of doctors who are putting brackets 
they're not even orthopedics. It is a fashion today. I'm sorry? It is a fashion yeah, that use practice is a fashion today, no? But do you know that the majority of, of the of dentists that are put in the brackets, they're not um they're it's not a fashion, um, but it's a it's a fashion, but it's a business for, for the doctor. Yes, but there's a problem, but the majority who are doing that no son orto orto orthodoncistas, orthodontists. They're general dentists. And they're putting on brackets. Okay. And okay, that's one thing, you know, be careful for that because, and that's, it's a very good business because imagine I tell you, I say, okay, Gio, Ingrid, Claudia, and Elena, give me a hundred dollars down payment and pay me $50 a month. I will have you pay me $50 a month. I don't know, for three years. And the, the material for the uh, brackets maybe only costs a hundred dollars. You are giving you are giving idea to Ingrid that to for the business, no? <laughs> no, no. I'm actually I'm actually giving you like advice. Be careful when you go to a. a mm -hmm. And you know what's the number one trick? I did not know this, but in El Salvador, no hay esa materia ortodoncista. You have to either study in Mexico or or Brazil, I think, or United States, or what, yeah. So the majority of people, of doctors that put brackets, preguntan is, hey, where did you specialize? Ah, en la nacional. He's not an orthodontist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that does not exist here. So, oh, well, after that, I learned. So every time I go to a doctor, I look at the diplomas. But, but, but in the UMA, yeah? I'm sorry? In the woman? The woman what? No, no in the woman you had this, this career, this, this career, I don't know. I don't Cala, think so. Cala, Uma, Uma, it's a university, the Uma. Yeah, I think, I think there's Probably. like, I think there's like technicians, but that's still not considered orthodontists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, that's what I, well, the reason why I'm telling you is because when, you know, when people go see my wife, she's like, look, uh, the orthodontist of the clinic, he will charge you, oh, you know, but are you not going to go to my barato? Yeah, but the real story is because maybe he's not a real orthodontist. <laughs> and that's a rebuttal. That's what I told my wife. She says, no, but it's not ethical to speak bad about my colleagues. It's and I said, it's not ethical. I mean, you're saying, you're not lying. You know, so always have a good rebuttal when you sell something. Yes? Yes. Or, or in fact, not when you sell something, when somebody attacks you, your boss, your mother, your spouse, like, you know, like, hmm, 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 and boom, attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I, so I think I think that the the cell cell person is a reward or no? Is especially because they they sell whatever. Yeah, that that they, they are saying that they they sell all that the, the stone. If you have if you are going to sell and the stone, they they sell they sell the stone. Yeah, it's true. But you really have to know what you're selling. You really have to know your product. That, that, that's what I, I, I've been in sales and really, you know, when you sell something, you really, really have to study what you're selling. Like in your case, Ingrid, even if it's going to be a bra, study a lot about that bra, the people that use it, that bra, why they use that bra and everything. So when you sell it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, even the the um, the fabrics, the percent the percent of fabrics that the bra has over the panty. Yeah, I remember once I had an interview. I was going for a sales job, and I I had a very 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 good job in Dell when Dell opened in El Salvador. And um, in fact, I was going to go to India for a year 
and I already had the letter, you know, I was doing this, and then Dell went bankrupt and closed. But I remember this, the person that interviewed me, he was um, a gringo, right? And he told me, have you, okay, sell me something. I said, what do you want me to sell you? And he says, okay, uh, sell me this. What did he give me? He gave me a pen, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, it freaking, he gave me a pen. No, he gave me a rock, he gave me a rock. It was something like he had on the desk. He said, sell this to me. And I said, really? <laughs> like, really? Well, it's a rock. You know, sell it to me. Make me buy it. And I said, okay, look, what do you see here? It's not just a rock. You can use this rock for many things. You can use it as a, a you know, accessory for the table to hold the books. You know, <laughs> you can open the door and you, know, you can hold the door. And cuando me lo gané, and I said, I'm sorry, are you, do you live in El Salvador? He said, yeah, I'm going to live here. Okay, great. So you can also use this rock as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and that he laughed too. He said, oh, yeah, if someone comes at you, just throw it in his head and start running, sir. You know, <laughs> and he told me, oh, man, la compro. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I sold on the rock. <laughs> And I got the job. But it was funny because I, I never, you know, I thought he was going to say, how would you sell a car? How would you sell a house? You know, and I was prepared for that. Like, you know, first of all, you know, I, I would study the zone and then the the size of the house. I was prepared for a question like that, but I wasn't prepared for him to tell me to sell a, a rock. So he said, I, I would buy it. So that was cool. And then that's where I learned rebuttals. So I remember in the cubicle, we had like, if the customer says this, you tell them this. When the customer says this, you tell them this. So yeah, and it's true. When we hear the, oh, here it is. Okay, so I wait for him to finish and boom, I attack him. But then I memorized all of them. <laughs> But uh, it's it like a COVID vaccine right now that the old pharmaceutical it right now is, is running to have, I don't know, what is the the first uh, company have the, 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 the vaccine ready to, to sell or whatever, all country, no? Yeah. Yeah. I, I am, I'm in favor of vaccines. I, I've been getting vaccines all my life since I was a baby and I'm okay. <laughs> So, if it, you know, if medicine tells me, hey, it's necessary, do it, I will do it. But, you know, I, right, I, think, I think this but, vaccine... But right now, I'm sorry, go but ahead. Right now, right, but right now, Putin is looking for people to, to test the vaccine, no? Yeah, maybe. Oh, that's where they're going <laughs> to testing. attack the government now. <laughs> yeah. That's where they're going to attack the government now. Bukele wants us to be the guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, yesterday, yesterday, Bukele said that he sold. Yeah, he have a, an agreement with the with some company. I don't know with the the company. I don't know from England. And right now, we have I don't know the the agreement to sell. sell I don't know two million of of, of COVID vaccine. Yeah. No. Yes. Um. I don't know if I told you, but when 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 the quarantine started. There was a good documentary. I don't know if it's still there in um in in, in Netflix, but it's called El, El Coronavirus Explained. It's very good. It's three episodes. It's like 20 minutes each episode. It's very, very good. Because the first one it tells you how it started. You know, it did start from China. And then the, the mistake that China did was that it, you know, when when they when they noticed that on a person, they stayed quiet, you know. And, this doctor announced, you know, a be careful. He put it on his Facebook, you know, a colleagues, be careful. There's this new disease, you know, it's called coronavirus. And it's very heavy, and then the government stopped him. In Wuhan, Wuhan era. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, and then and then they said that the, actually the mistake that China did, they had to close the city Wuhan, but they never closed it. 
So China, so it spread in China. When it, when it was out of control, they closed China. But the second or third mistake China did was that they closed China. People couldn't come in, but people could go out. Yeah, it, it, it was not a mistake. It's an agreement with the, I don't know, from all people, all over national had an agreement with, the, with China or, or I don't yeah. know. Yeah, G20, maybe. G20, G20 had an agreement with, with that, no? Maybe. Yeah, so, you know, in China, they say, hey, I'm from, a, I'm from I don't know, Mexico, buy us, go. Hey, I'm from Spain, I'm from Europe, I'm buy, go, 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 go. And maybe those people are being contaminated, and that's, so they exported the, 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 the disease. And then the second episode, which is the interesting one, and that's why maybe I think they are right, they started talking about the, the cure, and they said, like, the Ebola and sarampion, the chicken pox, that took yeah. like five years it took five years for the cure ebola it, it, it ebola took a long time too because people died too quick to understand what really happened but they say that when they find the cure it has three process uh, three processes one they try it on a hundred people for three months or four months i don't know how many and then to see the reaction and then the phase two would be okay now those hundred people are mixed with another hundred people for another three months and then the you know but there's there is a process for them to find a cure after that it, after i saw that documentary make it oh okay i'm not going to talk anymore because you know how a lot of people say oh, yet the end and the cure they just don't want to give it you know like that and I, that's what i thought too but it that's what they said it, they explain how uh, ebola sarampion and all the diseases how they found the cure and the process it took and how like all the all the um laboratories in the world are really working hard because they want to be the, the country that says we found the cure so like maybe that's putin maybe he just wants to be the first one, but it's really not sure yet if, if that's the right one, because we don't know if it passed the three processes. Watch it, it's good. It's a very good documentary. If you have an hour, you can watch it. After the first episode, you will be angry with the Chinese people. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. Yeah. Like, I'm angry oh. from the start. <laughs> yeah. My cousin, she married a Chinese man, right? And she was going to get married, I think, in April. What, like, the next month after El Salvador closed, you know, and I said, and then, then she was going to get married when it opened. And I said, you know, I don't think it's a very good idea to marry him right now. Why? He's Chinese and all his family is going to come from China. You know, they're going to burn the hotel now. <laughs> you know, my cousin, ah, ya vas. No, you know, just be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but watch it. It's a very good documentary. I recommend you. It's El Ebola. I'm sorry. El coronavirus explained. The third one's a little boring because. It, 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 it's on documentary, I don't know, history or something like that. To... It's in Netflix. Netflix. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's where I saw it. I don't know if it's still there though, but it should be. The third one is about how to live in El in quarantine, but that one's kind of boring. But the first two are very nice. In quarantine, but not in curfew. In curfew, yeah. California has a curfew right now. Yeah, yeah. California is in a curfew, curfew right now. But the reason is because those people are crazy. I mean, there's a lot of people there that I don't, you, you can't obligate me to use a mask. I don't need to use a mask. And, this, and that's what I tell my family. Look, at least we, in Salvadoreños, they can say everything they can about us, but we are respecting this because everywhere you go, you see people with masks. Like today, I went to a store yeah. and I felt strange. Oh, I went to um, Plaza Merlior and I felt strange when I walked in. And I asked the security guard, you're not going to take my my temperature? He says, oh, no, the camera takes it. 
oh, okay, good. <laughs> but you know, yeah, <laughs> in the United States, people get offended, you know, like, you know, because there's the activists like, oh, this doesn't cure me and this and that. Even I don't know if all the molds, but uh, in Metro Centro, uh, they took the temperature without a, like a TV. Yes, that that's how it was today. And it's cool because even every store where you go, they, you know, alcohol and temperature. And I think that helps. But show your hands to the, to the camera and take the temperature. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. My family tells me like in the United States, people go to Walmart and, you know, like the security tells them, please wear a mask. You can't obligate me. I can, you have, you know, people always are discussing for everything. Well, I saw people protesting outside in, in a video, like thousands of people protesting, open the gyms and the hair salons. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, <laughs> imagine that. And you see, you see why that's happening now. So that's what I tell my family, at least in Salvador, I think we're doing a good job that, you know, you see everybody with a mask. Now it's strange when you see somebody with without a mask. It's like we we we. Even in the markets, yeah. in the markets. I've seen bolitos yeah, with a mask, because... man. <laughs> That's so cool. I took a picture yeah, of some yeah. as. Uh, but but in El Salvador, if, if you don't, don't use the 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 face mask, but the Ukele had ordered to to bend to bend your hand. To what? Bend bend your hand. To te dobla la te manda doblar la mano, no? Why? To bend. Te, te, te manda doblar la mano. I don't understand. Then double uh, then, then double your, your then double your hand. Okay, yeah. Okay, in esta no, uh, y, 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 en Salvador en Se acuerdan? Y, yeah, okay. Uh, remember class last last time we were talking about items? Yeah. Creo que ese es un item. Y item yeah, the, the, Jaime es algo como propio del idioma, que es como algo como doble sentido, creo, right? Pero no significa que así se dice en inglés. I don't, I don't know what happened in English, but the, if, you, if you're translating something, you, the, the, that if you not use the, the mask, that the, he said, okay, I double you, your hand. Okay, I yeah, know. I will bend your hand. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. Okay, no, okay, now I see what you're trying to say. But remember one thing. When, sometimes even in Spanish, is is doble sentido, right? <laughs> like, oh, okay, I get mm -hmm, it, I get mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. that really maybe is not the same translation in English. Translating yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. there is an interpretation though. There has to be another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's true. Yes. Okay, class. I will see you tomorrow. We'll continue tomorrow. Uh, and tomorrow, yeah, I think tomorrow. there's another video in the grammar. We're going to yeah. talk about past experiences that changed you. Okay. Like I was blah, 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 until I used to do this until, mm -hmm. okay. All okay. right, so thank you very much. Have a very good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. See you. Good evening. Good night. Bye. Good night now. Good night.